killing that compelled the founders of this body to build an institution that was focused not just on ending one war, but on averting others. A union of sovereign states that would seek to prevent conflict while also addressing its causes. No American did more to pursue this objective than President Franklin Roosevelt. He knew that a victory in war was not enough. As he said at one of the very first meetings on the founding of the United Nations, we have got to make not merely peace, but a peace that will last. The men and women who built this institution understood that peace is more than just the absence of war. A lasting peace for nations and for individuals depends on a sense of justice and opportunity, of dignity and freedom. It depends on struggle and sacrifice, on compromise, and on a sense of common humanity. One delegate to the San Francisco Conference that led to the creation of the United Nations put it well. Many people, she said, have talked as if all that has to be done to get peace was to say loudly and frequently that we love peace and we hated war. Now we have learned that no matter how much we love peace, and hate war, we cannot avoid having war brought upon us if there are convulsions in other parts of the world. The fact is, peace is hard, but our people demand it. Over nearly seven decades, even as the United Nations helped avert a third world war, we still live in a world scarred by conflict and plagued by poverty. Even as we proclaim our love for peace and our hatred of war, there are still convulsions in our world that endanger us all. I took office at a time of two wars for the United States. Moreover, the violent extremists who drew us into war in the first place, Osama bin Laden, and his al-Qaeda organization remained at large. Today, we've set a new direction. At the end of this year, America's military operation in Iraq will be over. We will have a normal relationship with a sovereign nation that is a member of the community of nations. That equal partnership will be strengthened by our support for Iraq, for its government, and for its security forces, for its people, and for their aspirations. As we end the war in Iraq, the United States and our coalition partners have begun a transition in Afghanistan. Between now and 2014, an increasingly capable Afghan government and security forces will step forward to take responsibility for the future of their country. As they do, we are drawing down our own forces while building an enduring partnership with the Afghan people. So let there be no doubt, the tide of war is receding. When I took office, roughly 180,000 Americans were serving in Iraq and Afghanistan. By the end of this year, that number will be cut in half, and it will continue to decline. This is critical for the sovereignty of Iraq and Afghanistan. It's also critical to the strength of the United States as we build our nation at home. Moreover, we are poised to end these wars from a position of strength. 